Hey again, guys. I wanted to ask you a question today. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be rich? How about to own that dream car, that dream house? See, wonder is a powerful thing. It drives people uh, to be workaholics in the pursuit of those riches or dreams. Some even search their whole lives because of a wonder in their life. Maybe or maybe not uh, fulfilling the questions that they have. Well, if you hadn't figured it out by those opening few statements, uh, we're going to be talking about wonder today. And I wanted to read you an excerpt from a book called Real Worship by Warren Wearsby. And it says this uh, in chapter four. It says, true worship involves wonder, witness and warfare. But we have to start with wonder. Wonder is the basis of worship, wrote Thomas Carlyle. Emerson said, that wonder was the seed of science. Philosophy begins in wonder, said Alfred North Whitehead. So it appears that wonder is a priceless ingredient in the life of any thinking person, and certainly it is important to the thinking, worshiping Christian. The trouble is that wonder is a rare ingredient. You don't often find it in most modern worship services. After all, what is there to wonder about? Why should there be any mystery in the worship experience of the average congregation? We know all about God because we read our study Bibles and take notes on the sermons we hear. We read books and, and listen to sermons in person on CD and it goes on, but essentially he's talking about that we know everything about God. What is there to wonder about, or at least we think we do, uh, what is there to wonder about in, our, in the context of our modern day uh, worship services? Now he goes on later in the chapter to say this, that we're no longer struck by the wonder and mystery of God and his revelation of grace. And, and as I read that, and as I think about this, it's, it's very concerning to me uh, because, you know, I'm guilty at times of losing the wonder that I believe that we should all have when it comes to God. You know, I grew up in church. I was a pastor's kid, a missionary's kid. I went to school for ministry. I mean, everything about my life has been, rev been revolving around church and ministry. And like many of you, uh, I've done so much church that sometimes, if I'm not careful, it can just become the norm. It can become routine to me. Um, you know, we come to church or, well, at this point in time, maybe we view church at home and participate in church at home. But, you know, we, we do our thing when it comes to church and then we move on. We go about our, our week and, and I feel like we've lost our wonder sometimes. And I think that sometimes it's because maybe we think we've heard it all. We know everything about God that there is to know. But I want to read you a scripture as a reminder that that's not the case. In Romans chapter 11, verses 33, the New Living Translation version says this, Oh, how great are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. How impossible is it for us to understand his decisions and his ways? See, I'm of the belief that there is so much power and so much depth in the scripture and in the word of God that God can continually reveal to us more and more about his nature, even in portions of scripture that maybe we've heard or read a thousand times before. If you're like me, there's scriptures that I know very well that, that at any point in time, God could show me something about that that is just revelatory. And, you know, towards the end of the chapter uh, in this book of chapter four, he states this, whether in our private devotions, our daily walk, or the corporate worship of the church, we must cultivate this attitude of wonder. And I think this is so good. It's an attitude that you and I have to cultivate. We have to be intentional about it. It's a choice of ours. So here's my challenge to you today. It's to take some extra time this week to intentionally begin to cultivate some wonder in your life as it pertains to God. You know, maybe it's memorizing scriptures that point to uh, the nature of God. Maybe it's finding scriptures that you don't quite understand and really digging in and reading and looking at the context and asking God to reveal things about that scripture to you. Maybe it's doing some of the things that we've talked about in the previous de devotions over the past couple of weeks. Um, maybe it's just 
shaking up the routine of your prayer life, trying to, to, to do something a little different in your relationship with God, whatever it may be, I believe that if you pursue the wonder of God and if I pursue the wonder of God, he's going to reveal more and more to us about him that we can stand in awe and wonder over. So I want to leave you with this verse today. Psalms chapter 33 verses 8 says, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Father, I pray that God, as we, as we continue our relationship with you, God, that you would just let us return to that wonder of you, God. Reveal to us more about who you are, God, but help us to pursue you in a way like we've never pursued you before, God, because we don't want to lose the wonder of who you are. Lord, so just help us in that area. God, I pray that you would bless everyone watching this, Lord, and help us to return to, to being in awe of you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you. In your heavenly name, we pray. Amen. Hope you guys have a great week.